I have a lot of friends mm. um, who are either from Ukraine um, or have relatives in Ukraine or so like every day I like very nervous to log on to Facebook to read the latest because everybody's like keeping updated on like their mothers in Kiev, their fathers in Kiev, like who's where, how are they evacuating, where are they going, et cetera. So, so lots of friends. Um, my my cousin is actually a couple of cousins are Ukrainian. Uh, they're all here, luckily. Um, but it's there's a lot, yeah. There, you know, when it was the Soviet Union, it was the, there was no it was really hard to like separate so everybody was everything you know and I'm from Belarus um but there it was just always like this mix I don't know how to say other than it's really painful to watch what's going on it's really truly painful and I feel so awful like horrified awful for obviously the Ukrainian people who are like fleeing right now home as refugees. And that's something we weren't fleeing gunfire, but I know what it's like to leave home and never return. When, you know, my family has all these roots in the Soviet Union and some, some of them are really dark and we were not treated well. But the fact of the matter is that like my, a lot of my relatives fought with the Soviet army and many of them died fighting fascism, you know, Nazism. And it's so hard to see and understand why did the, why is now Russia acting like reversed roles? Like it's so hard to understand the sacrifice that so many millions made for what, like what, now now like they're acting like fascists meditations in the family was actually a kind of an offshoot of my music from the suitcase project and that's because the music from the suitcase project was something that i spent a long time developing and it was it was a little bit of a selfish project for me because it allowed me to really explore my roots where we came from to really understand what i you know i left the soviet union i left belarus when i was four and a half so i like there's a there's a whole chunk of memory missing there and yet I grew up around this and so like I I've spent my in some ways spent a lot of my life and as a violinist my work filling in those memory gaps and so music from the suitcase was one one way of doing it but I think that what that project taught me was how much we as musicians, as artists, and also as humans are influenced by, you know, where, where we grew up, how we grew up, who are our families, who are our friends, what is our home. The, the album itself is dedicated to the music of the Russian composer, Sergei Prokofiev, and he's one of my favorite, favorite composers. You know, there, there's something about his music in particular. I, I, I felt this forever, so that I feel like someone's reading a fairy tale. And to me, they were really inspired by Russian folklore and folk tales, which is this like ground uh, of Russian folk stuff is so rich in the culture and it predates everything. It's hundreds of years old. And my idea in doing the Prokofiev was to kind of show people the connections between folklore and his music. And so it's like side by side on this album. But I remembered, I did one of these folk arrangements that I played and I played it somewhere in like Montana. And this woman came up to me and she grew up actually in Kazakhstan. And she was like, oh, you know, I was like humming along while you were playing. Like I haven't heard this piece since I was a child. And and then I met someone else who was actually Belarusian, and then someone else was Ukrainian. And all of these people grew up 
with these songs. Like that's, I grew up with these songs. Like Prokofiev grew up with these songs. That's, that's the folklore. That's like actually real music. That's like the great and beautiful part of Russian culture. That, that's actually what I want people to understand is that's the beautiful part. Of, of, of Russian culture, and I'm just sorry that they're seeing the dark part right now. Max Levinson is an amazing pianist. We've only actually played a couple times together, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited that this worked out. Uh, I think we're gonna actually play the Franck Violin Sonata, Cesar Franck Violin Sonata, which is one of my favorite pieces for violin. And it's funny because you know, we've been talking a lot about reflections of life and I really see that sonata as like his reflection of life. Each of the four movements is like a stage in a person's life. I will play some Prokofiev from this new album and specifically some of the, as well, these folk arrangements, uh, some of which were done by me, which is like really, I've never done that before in my life and some of which were done by two really brilliant composers. I think we will do a piece by Igor Stravinsky as well, which is kind of this incredible piece of philosophy, <laughs> I would call it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the concert. I like to reflect and it's nice to like get to this year point since like you like re restarted maybe, at least for me, since the pandemic. And it's so interesting to, to like reflect like all right it's been a year like what how has this gone you know and and definitely like i would say like this like it is uh, the answer is it's such a privilege to be able to make music to be able to play for people and to like have people listen uh it's you can't replace that with anything <laughs>